this week in Chaos Craft, we ran into a whole lot of problems. So, this week in Chaos Craft, we started to look at what it would be like to have them farm. And I think I mentioned this a little while ago, I added in the ability to have them navigate using Minecraft's pathfinding system, or they can use their own raw navigation. Well, I've got them so they can navigate only with their wander action. So I made it so that by default, if they choose no other actions and no other raw outputs, like go left, go right, they'll attempt to seek this beehive here. And that works pretty well. But for some reason, and I have no clue as to why, it works with none of the other actions. So I worked on that for an absurd amount of time and still has not have not come up with anything. But I'm confident we'll get over it. But I'm going to tell you guys about some other stuff that I did. So a while ago, if you look back at some of our videos, I gave them the ability to communicate. And this was probably a version 0.2. They could actually chat with each other. So I wanted to take that to another level. So I started playing with OpenAI's GP2 release, which is trained to, to complete comments that you find on the internet based on a bunch of internet comments and other, and other text. I started... Working on that, it creates words and sentences and all that stuff. Uh, one of the most notable projects that uses it is AI Dungeon here, where it creates a scenario for you based off of trained data from GPT, and you can basically type anything. I flew around in a te this text-based adventure. I had lasers. I flew to space. Uh, here, evidently, I went back and uh, had s some conspiracy conspiracies against George Washington. I'm not even sure. I took someone into custody here. This was pretty funny. He said, well, it looks like my work is done here. Your superiors, superiors agree and say that they would like you back in a few days with no surprise deviations along the way. <laughs> For some reason, I said, I'm going to home to make love to my wife. <laughs> the superior said, we'll see. That doesn't bode well. You can type in just about anything. I decided to ambush my superiors with a ninja attack. You ride your, oh, I did have a magic carpet. It seems to have remembered that. I I decided that one. You ride your magic carpet back home, but when you arrive, you know superiors are not pleased with you. That was pretty lame. I throw ninja stars at my superiors. You throw five stars at your superiors, three on each side. They attempt to dodge the stars, but the stars are so quickly and deadly that two of them fall dead on the ground. So you can do pretty much anything you want in this game. It is pretty interesting. It, it's getting better and better because it learns from you as you play it over time. And so I decided to break down how that all works, and I even managed to find the AI dungeon source code here and dig through that quite a bit. I then got this thing working in PyCharm, where I found a ton of quotes from Zelda games, text dumps of all the information they have there. These are all pulled out of old Zelda games. Princess Zelda. I trained their smaller model. Unfortunately, it took me a long time to get this thing to use GPU, and their bigger model, which is 345M, is too much to train on here. It's 345 million tokens, I think it's got, versus 117 is, is the one I trained it on. So I can type things like, it is dangerous to... And it'll try and complete that sentence there. To war with another country. I was trying to get it to say it's dangerous to go it alone, but it's good that it improvises. To war with another country and attack that country you've never seen before, engaged in, or... And I told it, I have a limit of length of uh, 20, so it'll only do 20 tokens here. The legend says that you are not an American, but she is, which is not really a big deal. Okay, some of these are off the wall. Your sword is... The only thing that can give you the strength to do all that you think you can. So the way that I think that they're doing the story is that they would type something like, Jim works as a blacksmith. Jim is married to Jane. Jane is a freedom fighter. Jane says to Jim... And they kind of do something like that where they tell it part of the story and then it has to improvise the next line. I want you to understand I'm your slave. Wow, that's that's dark. The gym, that's really dark. Jim and Joe are brothers. Joe is a baker. Joe is mad at Jim because... And it improvises the next line there. Wow, that's really bad. Blank is, 
It needs some work. I'm going to get one of these that's good for this. He thinks his kids will be cheating on his kids will be cheating on him at the school. This is really weird stuff is printing out right now. Link's next great adventure is Grimmer's last adventure. Okay. These are really bad examples. Link climbed the mountains to vanquish his enemies. When he got to the top, he found blank. Ice tea, which he found as he waited for the battle to begin. When the battle began, he found... Sometimes it gets a bit repetitive. I'm sure if I used the 3, 4, 5M and had enough memory to process that, then I would get better results. But this is a start. So I had an idea. I had a couple of ideas, actually, but... A while ago, I did a project called Chaos Pixel, where I trained an AI to generate pixel art based on a bunch of pixel art that we fed it. That was uh, at least a couple months ago, if not a year ago, last September. So I started to get the idea of what if we could pull pixel art out of ROMs and train it based on that. So I found Gameboy.js, which is a JavaScript implementation of a emulator. Using this, we can upload a variety of ROMs which then we could play through and pull pixel data out of it. A good example of this is Pokemon. It's got some really nice tile sets, creatures, and all that. In reality, I actually found a complete repository of all the different Pokemon. But somebody had already pulled out a lot of Pokemon sprites, so I could easily pull them from this as well to train. But I want to go far beyond just Pokemon. I'd like to pull pixel art from all over the place and train it on. Now the thing that I'd have to do is make it so you could classify these, so I'd need some help from people to classify this type of information. What would be really cool is to combine Chaos Pixel and the GPT-2 stuff, so then we would now have a dungeon where it actually generates its own pixel art. And I've got even more ideas on how to take this a lot further. I also started designing uh, an engine that could be used to create a Zelda-like game completely from generated text and generated pixel art. It breaks it down into a couple different parts and it's still very much just a notes on a napkin style type ballpark idea here. But it could create an infinitely generated universe of completely artificially intelligence generated content. There would be a storyteller, a level builder, chaos text, which is what I'm calling the GPT implementation, and chaos pixel, which we've already talked about reading from ROMs. The level generator would take in inputs like the tiles around it, a biome, maybe a quest, the XY, and it would output the tile type. And then it would take in the same information and output an item, if there's an item located or an NPC that would be on that level. Additionally, I started drawing out, oddly enough, a design for a 2D physics engine that would have a near infinite combination of materials that it would create that would have different effects with each other. So the material A might melt material B, but would also be conductive for material C and cause material D to expand. And then there, we could create all sorts of different combinations of things. So I went a little off the rails this week. Here's the storyteller and some drawings of skulls and guns. I don't know why. I'm not sad, actually. Uh, I also worked on some more chaos net type stuff or chaos craft type things where I worked on a planning neural net and what that would look like to actually have the neural net think ahead and be able to improvise and recalculate routes and things of that nature. So I did work on chaos craft quite a bit considering I was so all over the board here. I also worked on code deep neat, which code deep neat is a really interesting way of creating a deep neural network by switching out layers, and I'm still wrapping my head around this, and a special shout-out to username in the Discord and Cold Embrace. You both helped me kind of figure out how this might look if we were to implement it in ChaosNet, so that is something I'm thinking about. I also did a watercolor of Terry Crews, uh, the Old Spice guy. I thought it was pretty funny. I'm trying to do more expressive faces. They're a little more complicated than just regular faces to do, so that was fun. With all that said, it's been a pretty long week. I'm also trying to redo schematical.com so it better fits the AI work that I've been doing lately instead of my pre-existing consulting work. 
So before I forget, I got to say thank you to all my patrons out there, by the way. You guys are great. You guys help me keep going on this. It's to you guys and everybody else out in the audience that I'm looking to find out what do you guys think I should work on right now. I definitely plan to keep working on Chaos Craft, but I want to expand our horizons beyond just that limited scope we currently have. Should I focus more on the Code Deep Neat stuff? Should I focus more on the planning stuff in the future? Should I focus on getting them to communicate? Should I consider writing a more advanced content generating game engine that could really make some baller Zelda games? What, what do you guys want to see next too? I'm, I'm excited about so many different things here we can do. You guys let me know in the comments. I'm super excited to hear what you say. This week was a weird week. I know. Definitely wasn't our normal Chaos Craft week, but that's fine. Sometimes you got to expand your horizons, and it's good for me to learn more about these fascinating techniques outside of this. It's funny, as I was doing this thing, this actually hit a breakpoint that indicated that it, the navigation was working since I started this recording this thing saying it was going to work. So there is hope. We'll be back to it. I'm excited to see where we can go with this, but I'm also excited to see what other stuff we can work on too. So much in gaming and AI right now that could be really amazing. So thank you guys again. Smash that like, share, subscribe if you want to hear more about neural networks, gaming, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and all that fun stuff. Have a great week.